You might have heard one of my previous webinars or videos where I talk about the most common FDA 483s. And the most common sources are number one, Kappa. It, Kappa is right at the top of the list. That is the top of the list. Number two on the list, complaint handling. So you have a complaint handling procedure or the way you handled your complaints that you have doesn't meet the requirements. And they're very prescriptive and, and very detailed requirements. The third requirement is MDR reporting or medical device reports. So whenever you have a serious injury or death that needs to be reported to the FDA or you had a situation occur, an incident, where if it happened again, it could result in a serious injury or death, but didn't this time, somebody narrowly uh, avoided injury, it still counts as something that needs to be reported in case it were to reoccur. And so companies don't report those always as they should, don't report them in a timely manner, don't collect all the information that they should. So these are the top three things that the FDA writes up as 43s. But what I see a lot of companies struggle with, unnecessarily so, is that they have a low risk device. They don't expect any possible fathomable way that somebody could ever get hurt by their product because it's a safe product. Let's say it's software as a medical device. How can that software as a medical device hurt me? So they say, so I don't need reporting. I'm never going to do it. But the problem is the FDA requires that you have a procedure for it no matter what. And they require that you have an electronic submissions gateway set up. So if you have something that's reportable, you can report it in a timely manner within the 30 days that it's required. Because if you had to set up your own electronic submissions gateway, you wouldn't get it done in 30 days. If you have to start and you've already received your complaint and you, you decide right away, I need to report this, you can't get that whole thing done in 30 days. So you need to set that up in advance. So this is one of the things that people unnecessarily get a 483 uh, inspection observation for. There's, they haven't done anything wrong except not, except they didn't prepare for the possibility of something bad happening. It's never gonna happen because the software is a medical device. Nobody's gonna get hurt, but you still have to prepare. That's the policy. So if you are in that boat, you need to do two things. Number one, you need to write a procedure for, well, three things. One, write a procedure for MDRs. Number two, set up an electronic submissions gateway. And number three, document some training on how to use the procedure and how to use the electronic submissions gateway. So um, on our website, I'm gonna put a link down below in the video where you can purchase our procedure for MDR reporting if you need one. I'm also gonna put the link for where you can get our work instruction. It's a detailed work instruction step-by-step -step on how to set up an electronic submissions gateway. And that's what this is about. It's gonna show you the ins and outs of our electronic submissions gateway. And the third thing is, if you need some training, I'll put a link for that as well um, for MDR reporting, complaint handling in general. Uh, it also covers vigilance. It's basically the exact same process, no matter what. It's first document your complaint and then make a determination, does this meet the requirements for reporting? And it's over time, it's become more and more similar to the US's approach for all countries. So um, you, you need to look at uh, which countries you're marketing your product in, but even if the incident occurred in Australia, if you're if you have the same product sold in Europe, in Canada, and the U.S., you're going to have to report in those other countries in all likelihood as well. So here, let me show you the procedure. Okay, and let me enlarge that a little bit so it's a little easier to see. Okay, so this work instruction was written by Matthew Walker. He's written a lot of our newer um, work instructions and procedures for the quality system. And he's revised a lot of mine. He does an excellent job of doing the gap analysis and being extremely thorough and going to that level of detail that an inspector or auditor is gonna do during your recertification audit or an FDA routine inspection. Um, as with all our procedures, they're all going to be revision A when you approve them, but we put a draft number after that so we can track which version it is uh, rather than have it 
be version X by the time you get to it. Um, so it's all revision A. This is our first draft because this is a brand new work instruction that Matthew created. And any questions that you have, he's already put in the help desk email that you can use. And this is, there are two methods you could use. There's an automated method that you have to validate. And then there's a web trader for setting up an electronic submissions gateway. We write all our procedures for small companies that are launching their first product. Now, it'll suffice to use our quality system when you're even become a mid-sized company, but you're not, you shouldn't have any situation in your company where you're having to do hundreds of adverse event reports on a regular basis to the FDA. So you shouldn't need that automated process that's for a large company with a high-risk device or a large pro company with a big problem. Uh, so in, your, in this case, you want a, probably a web trader account, and that's what we walk you through step-by-step. Step. And um, in here, we give you a lot of different references to different locations, including guidance documents. We have um, approval of the document. This is going to be, um, you're going to actually indicate who's going to approve it. It would typically be the quality manager in your company, uh, or it could be the person that's responsible for the adverse event reporting process. We have the revision of the document and you would add rows as you make future revisions. Who's responsible for this process? Typically it's gonna be um, somebody, um, and this is very specific to the web trader setup of the account. There has to be one person in your company, at least one, that is the company representative. You can have additional people in the template form that we give you allows you to do that, but you gotta have at least one in each person you add to that list is considered a company representative. Um, here's the procedure, steps one through six. We block out how much estimated work time it's going to take and how much wait time you're going to have. And the bulk of the time is waiting for the FDA to respond. Then we have requesting a new web trader account, how you do that, what email you send out. Um, so you send out an email and then you follow it up with a paper document as well. Uh, and it talks you, talks you through the process step-by-step step what's done. And here's your physical hard copy letter of repudiation. And here's the address it goes to. And here's the phone number uh, that you're going to use for FedEx because most people would send it out FedEx. Um, and then down here you have um, uh, more information step-by-step step on how to complete this form. We actually show you a screen capture of what you'll see on the website. Um, the uh, test method for, so you, there's actually a, um, a test submission that you're going to do. So when you set up your electronic submissions gateway, it's not just setting up the um, test site, but you also have to create an actual MDR form for your device's product and fill it out as if it were real. And then you submit it to this test site to actually show that you are filling in the form correctly and you're able to access the site properly. And then once you've loaded that in, you go to the next step. This tells you how you can validate the process and whether you need to validate the process. And it's based on the size of the files and how many you expect to submit. Um, keep on walking through this. Registering your test account. So um, this is once you receive that test account, this is how you register it. And then there's also um, the production account at the end of this. Um, so setting up your machine PC for ESG. So this is actually setting up your computer because you have to have the software loaded on your computer, sending the test submission step, production account approval. So this is when once you've done the last step, which is submitting your test report sample, then the FDA converts your account into a, a production account. And now you are ready to go to actually submit these. And because all those steps are involved, that's why this process takes more than 30 days and you really have to do it in advance. And then of course we indicate what records you would need and where you would store them. And we always have this over on the side where it says, put in the URL for where you're gonna locate those documents if it's electronic storage. And then we have other types of forms and documents and records that we would put here. Um, and then um, here's an annex or a, a copy of what the letter would look like for the letter of repudiation. So you can actually copy and paste this right into your letterhead and send it off to the FDA. 
and here's a sample letter two, and that's it. So that's the entire 11 page, very detailed work instruction, just showing you what you get. But as you can see, it is a very detailed document that walks you step-by-step step through every single thing that you'll do. It tells you how, how long it's gonna take you to fill out the form. We give you the information to fill in the form. We actually tell you how long you're gonna wait. We tell you where it's gonna go. We even give you the FedEx, the, the phone number to give them in case they have trouble delivering for FedEx. So we've given you everything you need in that work instruction. Um, most of our procedures are 299. This particular work instruction is 199 because it's a work instruction instead of a procedure. And if you have any other additional questions you want, you say, I just, I don't have time to do this. I don't have the resources. I'm one person company. Could you do MDR reporting for us? Yes, we can, we can give you the procedure. We can train you on it, but we can also do it for you. We can set up the ESG for you and we can set up a contract with you. So we actually do the MDR reporting for your company uh, to the FDA. If that's something that you want and you, you want to, let's say you're a non-US company and you want us to uh, uh, be your US agent, we offer that service as well. I hope that was helpful to you for those of you that are trying to set up an ESG account and need some help, um, or for those of you that are just trying to understand what the requirements are so you can plan, I hope this helps. Have a great day, bye-bye.